And, and they're not the only one that feels this way. That's actually a good way to transition into Windows 8. Oh, yeah. You mean what do y'all think of... Windows yeah. Phone 7 uh, Desktop Edition. Well, we know what Kami thinks of it. But what do you think of Windows 8? I like it. You like it? Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I, I like Windows device. strategy. The they're they're making their OS all over yeah. here. And, and I was watching the D8 conference, and they're like, well, it goes back to Windows. And what, what happened? I mean, I, 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 wanted to, I, I think I wanted to smack them. I was like, what? But just because it doesn't follow an Apple model of having two iOS and an OS X, who says that's the correct model? I actually like Windows models saying, yeah, it all runs in the one damn package. Wasn't it the Apple argument of saying, well, gee, we have 62-bit and 32-bit in one flavor, and Windows separates it? Oh, but when it comes to UI aesthetic crap, which is really just the fluff of everything, oh, you, you, that's got to be separate. Well, it's gotta be, you okay. better have uh, you know the mobile side and the, and the desktop side. I mean, come no, on. He, here, he, here's my problem with the direction they're taking the UI with Windows 8. A touch screen is pretty much compulsory. I know they say you can do everything with the keyboard and mouse, but I watched the guy trying to do it, and the, 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 the combinations he was doing to, you know, do these gestures Could with the keyboard. Yeah, it was... It was it, 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 yeah, I know. It, it, it was, yeah, it was not... It was not. Uh, it was not elegant. It, it was. It was one of those things. I'm like, I would have a hard time doing that coordinated. And and he was having a hard. He was trying desperately to make it look really simple, but you could see his hands just twitching like a like a. <laughs> so and it, that that's the bit I'm concerned about. That there isn't a good way on that aspect. The page up, page down. I'm fine with. Uh, now I'm a little. I'm not sure I agree with the choice of key buttons because I honestly wonder how many average end users, you know, obviously all of us know we have a page up, page down, but the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that is, you know what, I bet I can name 20 people who don't have a clue that they have a page up, page down button, let alone where they are. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's just little things like that. It, it's one... I think without meaning to, they've created a UI paradigm like another Vista, where people are just going to get irked by it, uh, that they're almost going to need another OS to get people, like they're gonna, the, they, people are going to declare they hate it because it's different and not really give it a shot, whether it's a good idea or not. I'm going to give it a shot. I, I like it. I mean, I, I think when the, the, the normal Windows UI is obviously still present there. But I think what they're trying to do and just show off was the tablet version of Windows OS. I don't think. No. I think. No. I think that. that, I think that, that, that no. Bit. That, that's the desktop OS. I, I. I was saying the same thing Sunday, but I've done some more research here and I've looked into this. There are videos on Microsoft's official YouTube site and other things. This is the default at boot UI for every Windows 8 system, regardless of form factor. It is that tile swipe system. That's it. That's I, I, don't, I don't mind a tile swipe. All right, well, then I'd have to play with perhaps navigation is faster with those tiles than the start button. I, I'm, I'm open for, you know, for, uh, for stuff like that. I hope they have either a quick universal search, you know, like I can maybe just hit a, a couple of keys, like on... Uh, I was telling I can hit command space and, and watch an app or, or whatever. So I'll give it a shot. I, 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 don't know, I like I like I really like I own a Zoom HD. I like the Zoom interface. I think it's kick kick butt and, and I think Windows seven follows that same tiles there. I think that's pretty cool. So uh, I, I, I don't know on that. It, it's it, I think it's kinda of on top of my hand does up. Yeah, it, it, it's gonna be an it, it's gonna be an interesting uh, pull to make there. Oh, I'm just gonna let you go back to classic version. Come on, they're not gonna force you to. And that's just like no. for many years, you could always go back to Windows Classic. Oh no, so. no, that that's the problem. Windows Classic isn't Windows Classic. It hasn't been for a long time. Right? I mean that if the Windows 8 will let you go to a Windows 7 UI. You know, that's what I mean by going a classic version, like going back. So. Yeah, well, no, and, and all the yeah, most people didn't know how to turn that stuff out on XP or Windows, Windows Vista or Windows 7. Uh, like, the people that like that UI doesn't know how to turn that back on back in the 98 UI, you know? Oh, 
Well, no, and, and here's the thing. I, I, I am awaiting final judgment until I get my hands on it. And supposedly there's going to be a public beta this fall. And I swear that's why Apple said, iOS 5, fall. They're going to wait till they know when Microsoft's public beta is, and then they're going to try and steal the thunder. You know, this is the, this is the old-fashioned... <laughs> It's like it, it, it's been a it, it, even during the the you know Apple ad you know I'm a Mac I'm a piece of crap you know thing um, that that was not they, they were not snapping at each other like they are right now there's some real snipping going on here that's I mean that's that, 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 they're honestly both threatened by each other I don't know it's um, on that note, okay, you like the UI. What do you think about the idea that they're in that they're basically uh, designing the apps in HTML and JavaScript? All of the apps are going to be like that. S say it again. All of the apps are going to be like that. Uh, well, I mean, there's the legacy apps, but they're acting like that's what they're encouraging. Like, these seamless full-screen apps that they were showing and going for, it's like, it, basically, they want, they want the apps written like that, so they work with this full-screen thing they're every going Every operating system is not enjoying going to this higher level languages, the markup, you know, it, because it's, it's essentially, everything else happens automatic underneath. You don't have programmers mapping their own memory and all sort of stuff and I'm, that's what I'm seeing more and more programming is coming to that they want all the automatic underpinning layers to be really invisible and most programmers now they just become web developers essentially using web technologies uh, yeah well I mean it, it, it it's, it's great for people like me but you know I, I'm not sure I want the computer applications running on that. I don't sure. I, 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 I think there's great benefits to, uh, even though it's harder to do, even though it's harder to develop programs to program, you get a tremendous amount of performance. And, and I like native apps, and I hope that native apps you know, preserve native apps and you know, like C sharp is pretty powerful. It's got, it's got ties all the way down. Like C sharp is pretty powerful. It's got, it's got ties all the way down. Yeah, that's a po that's a possibility there. One of the things I'm a little wondering about actually is um, I'm surprised at this because what what will be an ultimate byproduct of this? I'll tell you why they're doing that though. They're probably making those applications on like social stuff, like in photos and movies and whatever the hell it is, and, and by doing it in that code, that it can just then be put in so many more devices, put in the cloud. Uh, no, no, that, that, that's the thing. That's what I'm honestly thinking about here. If they really get all the developers doing applications for Windows to start doing that, that means what's happened by proxy, uh, without Microsoft meaning it to, is now all the applications are pretty much platform agnostic, will run on pretty much anything, and can easily become cloud-based, which means I don't need Windows to run them. They just, That's right. They just happen to run on Windows. You know, I run them on OS X. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, or Linux, or BSD, or Chrome OS. And I, I'm just like, I'm surprised of all the companies to be proposing this. Microsoft. You know, Microsoft is more interested in selling. You know, so my, you know, Office is never going away, and their enterprise section is never going to go away. And that's, I see that's the thing. But, uh, we people would like to say we're post PC. I'm sorry. P I consider like this Zoom HD a PC. You know, I'm, no, I'm, see, no, that that's the it, thing. I consider it, it, it were post maybe desktop, but then I would say we were always uh, struggling with desktop. In other words. You don't need, most users don't need an i7 with 4 gigs of RAM and, you know, liquid cooling like I got in yeah, my... Bit, bit, bit. What, when did you every, buy a system? 12 gigs of RAM! You know. Yeah, <laughs> it's overkill. I, I can see that not everybody needs a desktop and maybe a tablet if they've never had a computer before in their life. But see, I'm, I'm hard pressed in saying, I'd like to meet those people because, uh, Lord have mercy, I've got a large pretty large sphere of uh, 
of acquaintances and people I work with all over. This when I was, went to Japan and other places, but everybody everybody goes to work and uses a computer, right? So they already have computer experience by just going to work. So I think you're hard pressed in saying, well, <laughs> who, who doesn't have a computer or doesn't know how to use it? They use a computer. That they, and that that in itself, that's how Windows I think became so successful. Is that is that that people went to work and then wanted to, wanted to do extra things when they got home. Well, they were accustomed to things like they were at work, and that's how it bled into the home. Well, and the other thing going on there, honestly, and this is one of the reasons I I personally have real reservations about the Windows 8 UI tweak they're doing. Like I said, I'm holding final judgment till I actually play with. But my first impression of it is. Okay, this is great if I want to do something simple. The you know the whole sales pitch behind Phone Seven, in and out, in and out. You know, in and out. Get on with your life. Okay, and it, it looks like it's great for that. My but but no no but. Go through that by default. You can turn all that crap off if you're a power user. Well no no well no my my concern is and this is going to be my test of the UI. I like I like like we were saying last week. I'm fine with ease of use as long as it doesn't get in the way of getting actual stuff done. And the real test I want to weigh against here is how hard is it to get actual work done and do some higher end stuff that is going to have to happen in a lot of cases you know little things like conf configuring your network if something's wrong connecting to a VPN little things like that because if this quick in and out oversimplification swipe everything UI it's going to get in the way of that and you're going to get in a boxing match with the interface to get something done then it's basically made mountains out of molehills that didn't have to be made. And that's going to be the test of it. And, and that's one of those things we don't honestly know till we sit down and screw with it. Uh, I mean, you just can't. Well, yeah, and, and the thing of it is, is like, I, I had posted a lot of tweets getting angry with Austin Line, but now that I've seen Austin Line, they've actually done a, a, a lot of nice underpinning. So... Uh, that'll come out on my video. For instance, you can now encrypt the entire hard drive with File Vault 2. Automators improved greatly. They've improved the, the terminal. They've uh, they've got they've gotten more preferences from from what I can tell. I think it was just ready for if you install like uh, the, the the server layers on top. And uh, I so really, it's just they don't talk about it anymore. It's kind of like we were showing. The, the pro customers aren't their base, so they don't talk about it. But well, no, and, and, and the, the, line has been making those those improvements. You just don't mention them. It's, it's, well, no, and, and see, the, that's the thing. Honestly, with both these OSs, to really judge them, I gotta sit on and screw with them. But what is shocking to me, I mean, this is this never happens. But for all intents and purposes, both Microsoft and Apple are literally mm -hmm. saying the exact same thing. Get rid of everything, just make it a big... It's like literally the selling point of both Lion and Windows 8 is basically we have... It's a full screen experience. Uh, you're basically going to be doing one thing at a time uh, with, with degree of organizing, but basically, you know, that's the selling point. You know, multitasking, no. Right? It's not a no. Like, Big one thing front and center, and if you need another thing, put it next to this thing and do that thing. That's literally the selling point both are going for. And it's surprising to hear both of these companies selling this same thing. Slightly different wrappers, but for all intents and purposes, the same thing. That, that, that's a shocker. Bit? Yeah, hold, hold on just a second. There you go. <laughs> He's having trouble in paradise at the moment. <laughs> well, the whole, um, the whole job is and all thing. That's basically how you know, three is. It? No, no, that, that, that was the that was the other thing to bring up there. It, it's like Microsoft is not the only one doing this. This is actually a cross line. Everybody's doing this. Google, GNOME, sign it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's the plasma that would be written in. Who's your co-host, Bit? 
<laughs> One of his kids has decided to co host. <laughs> As y'all can see, Ben has a valid thing to be addressing. <laughs> and he will be right back. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm with you. It's, a, it's an interesting direction. I gotta get my hands on this to, 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 to know it. What I'm more concerned about is what it's gonna keep me from being able to do on both platforms. You know, it, it's... It's, I know you're not a Gnomeite, but what do you think of Gnome 3? Have you messed with it? It's not as bad as Unity. Unity <laughs> 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 doesn't say much, though. It's like saying, uh, well, this is not as bad as Manure. You know? Yeah, I, I know. It, it... You know, it... At the end of the day, they're just not what I'm look. Not, they're just not what I'm looking for, and you know that is what it is. And yeah, true. So, so now, what is what which is right now? They're we're just, are they written in some sort of language or what? You know, they're being a little bigger. For all I, from what I can tell, Microsoft has basically largely gotten rid of the gadgets. You know, they've just basically replaced everything with these tiles. And yeah, that big idea is in Windows, uh, Windows Vista, and that ate up on your okay. crap load of memory and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it made the CPU and memory go crazy. <laughs> well, no, I don't think it's going to eat up a shitload of CPU because, as they were pointing out in their demo, it, you know, it does scale right, and it scales well both to x86 and ARM, so I don't think you'll see the system getting overloaded from dedicating that stuff running all the time. No. Uh, even if they would, even if they had largely kept them, and remember, at Microsoft they were gadgets or gadgets or whatever the hell they were. <laughs> well, this, it sold uh, on systems like this with Frog 12 makes the RAM in single core, 1.5 gigahertz piece of crap, you know? Yeah, I, I, I know, but it, it, I don't think it ever a problem with that today. I, 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 honestly, the other thing I was surprised as hell to see Microsoft toting, aside from the, you know, doing less thing. Uh, Microsoft, of all companies, was toting ROS uh, was toting that Windows 8 will run on lower specs than Windows 7, um, which was just oh. one of those really. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's not something you usually yeah. expect out of Microsoft. Did, any thoughts on that? I think, yeah, I think they're pushing hard. They're, I think Microsoft is trying to diversify. I think they see the writing on the wall too. I, I mean, I, I don't think that. I do think that really desktop hardware is also probably going to be shrinking. If, pe if more and more people decide for them that these other devices are fine for them, which it probably is. I mean, other than maybe some web content and things like that can, that can still be argued today, if people find that it is actually enough to do just for them, you know, they don't come home and write programs or... They're not here doing a tremendous amount of creation. No, I, I, and I tend to network administrating and. But I tend to agree with you there. Honestly, I'm thinking uh, within five years, the only people who are really going to need a computer, computer, you know, a traditional laptop or tower, are are going to be. No, no, no. They're going to not even game players. It's going to be the people in the IT industry that are either doing the software programming, doing the hardware sun, or need a like a, uh, a a more powerful box to deal as a testing server in the corner or, or something. Uh, those are the people who are going to need those systems. The average user, you know, the average computer user, they're going to move for these hybrid devices, which are slates or slate hybridizations or these all-in-ones that are touchscreen. So I, I, in that regard, it, I, that's not necessarily such a bad move. And honestly, I don't think they're going to be best on x86. I think they're going to be based on things like the Kalel processor, the next generation of that. These just these system on chip systems. That, that's just what you're going to have. It's yeah, not we're finally simplifying. I mean, it's finally coming down to the way you, 
user behavior is, is, is happening is that we've actually made software more efficient. If you think about it, if we actually do go to the, mo the mobile route where um, that becomes the, the predominant PC that people use, then we've actually made things much more efficient and more to what the user demands, but that will also probably make desktop prices higher for those of us that Yeah, I, I, I have a sneaky suspicion you and I, to get our work done, are going to have to figure a way to pad in a five to, five to six grand tab to deal with this niche market system that we need to do what we're doing uh, that 90% of the end user doesn't need. So there's, uh -huh. yeah, it, it, that will drive the price of the system up. Uh, well, no, for, for, for certain things, you just need that. Uh, but, um, it, I, I mean, I guess uh, the only way I would see us not needing them, and this is a possibility, maybe software will catch up to the point that distributed parallel computing w amongst all your devices will actually be efficient. They do that right now in some non-time sensitive supercomputers, but it, it's, it's not necessarily the most efficient process right now. Uh, there's, I guess it could be made to be if the need arose. You know, that'd just be a software engineering problem. And I, I guess it's possible, but uh, I, I'm not seeing that happen well, what overnight. Was like or BIOS being something like that, burning more efficient. Well, no, but at the end of the day, you, you are still limited by the processing capability of what's in front of you. And it's, yeah, it, it's, I mean, you, you can't, I'm sorry, unlike a human being, you can't ask a computer to give you 120%. Sir, yes, sir! It's like, it just it doesn't work that way. Is that what we're for? Well, the reality is, you know, like Bit was saying, the number of people that actually need an i7, let alone a Xeon, is almost non-existent you know it, it's it, it just it doesn't exist well, you think it might eventually go full cycle because we were in phases you know during the days of AOL you didn't even have a URL bar you know you, uh, you just had the um you uh, just had the click people connection shopping uh, all that stuff uh, uh, and, I don't know where Bit stands on this Commodore but honestly if you had a slate with uh, like a Kell-L chip in it, you know, a little quad or six core uh, ARM processor, gigahertz to 1.4 gigahertz uh, with two gig of RAM. And really, those are the systems we should expect to start seeing in the next 18 to 36 months. Those are what's going to be coming out. Uh, if you have sufficient software, and for people who want the physical keyboard, the hardware accessory, and you, you're able to get that done, which is what everybody's trying to do right now. They're trying to go, this is the UI that makes this elegant and pretty and shot. The reality is, that is enough for the average user's computing. It is. For what the average user wants, it's simply a matter of the software just isn't 100% there yet. But that is simply a matter of software developers writing all the apps we need to do everything yeah, we can you, in the desktop the world in this world. Like a system where they need to do actual work on, like, oh, no, no, that, that's the thing. Uh, at, at the end of the day, the, those systems are fast enough to do the what most people would consider average work. Word yeah, processing, email. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting dual core for quite a lot. They've got no, 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 or dual. The, no, the, 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 bit, like, the, ca bit, the cal is quad core. Oh, is it? With a gigahertz, I think it's a gigahertz um, uh, video card on that what, thing. What architecture is it? It's ARM. It, it, oh, it's, it, it, it's a quad. It's basically a quad core Tegra. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and I heard Android. They have a, they patched a while ago where you just add a little line of code and make sure you made it make sure your application GPU accelerated. Yeah. So uh, well, I, I, I I'm holding final judgment on how how equipped Android is for this emerging transition paradigm shift that's going on in technology until after ice cream sandwich. They have a lot of sales pitches right now and I like the sales pitches and I love Android but the proof's in the pudding. I want to see the product they actually deliver. If the product they actually deliver is everything they say it's going to be and it works great with uh, Chrome and integrates well with other things, 
I think they've got a great solution there that'll deal for a lot of people. If it falls too f short of what they've promised, uh, then they may be a little behind. It's, it's one of those, they've promised a lot. How much of it are they going to deliver? We'll find out into this year, you know. <laughs> Now, uh, do you think they're ever going to go back open source or anything? Back to the Apache license or what? Oh, I mean, there's some open source solutions going on here, but basically we have three gorillas in here. We have Microsoft trying to take over this emerging world. We have Apple trying to take over this emerging world using an entirely different philosophy. And we have Google trying to take over this world using yet an entirely different philosophy. It, it, it really is three different approaches three different philosophies all trying to compete to dominate the same emerging market uh, as the yeah, paradigm shift. Yeah, everybody seeing the running on the wall. Really. Yeah, everybody realizes, everybody realizes the way we do things today, dead. It, 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 these, these devices have reached the point that they are powerful enough to take over and they're really more what the, the average consumer wants. Uh, and good or bad, right or wrong, whether you like getting away from the and moving to the cloud-based solutions and every, regardless of your personal preferences, it's going to happen. You know, the next next five years, we're going to be living in that Jetsons Minority Report world where it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was laughing when they did the USB stick because I'm like, oh my god, Minority Report was like, I have to take my USB stick over the door. I'm like, I, I was just laughing at that. I'm like, what? You can't do that over the network? Really? Really? <laughs> I mean, honestly, who, who transfers files around via USB stick like that now? That's... All sticker net, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> ah. No. Uh, is there anything else we really want to say on this? Or I, I think we've kind of said it. Say that again? About the YouTube license. Oh, yeah. Um, YouTube now has a Creative Commons license. Whenever you upload something, I saw that. Yeah. yeah whenever you up, I saw this over the weekend. Whenever you upload something to YouTube, you can either upload it as you've always uploaded it, or you can agree to release it under a Creative Commons license. Uh, I'm glad that they're doing it, but there's one thing I don't like about this, and that is, it's not a true Creative Commons license. It's a Creative Commons license in that I'm releasing it and giving other people permission to use it. But as far as I can tell, without doing the hack all of us do to download Flash things we're not supposed to, uh, and YouTube switching over to HTML5, so you have to start downloading HTML5 things. You know, it, that's going to happen over the next year, two, maybe three, who knows. Uh, but what I would have loved to see is if you OK Creative Commons, people don't have to use the YouTube system to access and edit and cut it in because that means they've got to put everything in and they've got to edit it in YouTube only with that really primitive restraining YouTube editor and yada yada. I'm like, hey, you know what, YouTube, if I've released it under Creative Commons, just let them download the file and do it on however they want to do it. You know, it, 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 and that actually would save Google bandwidth, I would think, because then there's just the one stream as opposed to the watch, thought, watch, watch, thought, as they're editing and messing with everything. But that's the way right. they chose to do it, you know. So, I mean, it, it's a good step forward, but, you know, it, I, I wish it was more. But I'm glad they're supporting the Creative Commons thing. My hope is that straightens out a lot of the... Um, bogus DMCA. yeah DMCA claims and stuff going on with YouTube although it's going to be interesting to see what happens when people publish stuff under Creative Commons that contains par parody copyright material like our aforementioned shows which got attacked a little bit fortunately they're still up and I think they're going to stay that way since nothing else has happened to them yet but you know what would they do if I released that under Creative Commons <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Okay. Oh yeah, and the Gmail hack has announced the FBI. A bit. This is right up your alley. Do, do you consider that? I don't consider this a hack. You heard about, about this? What? The Gmail. About what? The quote unquote. Huh? 
the the quote unquote Gmail hack. I don't know much about it. What, what what's it? It was what? phishing. People were phishing. Oh no, that's not. Right. Yeah, people were. No. Yeah, oh yeah. If, 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 if it's a social engineering thing. Then yeah. That's <laughs> uh, like it's attracting the attention of the F. F and you know, like, I I I'm gonna say this here too. I said this a couple other places. I'm smelling new lockdown legislation. Because there's this big push as of late. Protect us from the evil hackers and everything. You know, know. social exploits are becoming hack. Hack. I'm like, you know what? That has not that's not a hack. That's hey dumbass, would you like to give me control of your life? You know, it's right. like that, that, that's not a hack. That's a, like you said, social engineering. You know, we're having specials on TV. Yeah, or how, yeah you know, I, I have not seen this much media um hack or this yada yada since the late 80s when they were trying to get, you know, the computer abuse acts and stuff passed. It's, it's like they're gearing up to do more of this legislation or something. It's like the lobbyists are planting seeds or something. I I hope I'm wrong because ba based on the current political climate, if they're fixing to push something like that through, it's not going to be good legislation. It, 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 right. Yeah. It, it, uh and on that depressing note, unless we have anything else to go into. <laughs> no. I guess that's it. Yeah, we're gonna end we're gonna end on a downer. Sure. You know, a whole tinfoil hattiness. So Bye. <laughs> everybody polish the tinfoil and hope I'm wrong. Peace uh, out all. <laughs>